Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk you through the books that I want to read in January. Honestly, would you believe that it's like 3pm here in London? It's so dark outside and sorry if you can literally hear the rain because it's like dark and stormy. So we have no sunlight to work with today, but we are just moving on. It doesn't matter because I'm just showing you the books that I want to read. So let's just jump right in. I've just decided this stack of books and now I'm looking at it again and I'm like, this is a big stack. And also I'm already doing a few books that aren't on this stack. Like I'm listening to things on audiobook and I'm reading things in my library digitally. So it might be a little bit unrealistic. If you know anything about me, you know that I love an unrealistic TBR. So we're just gonna jump in. Normally I kind of go through and do categories for the kind of TBR that I create um, because it keeps me on track, make sure that I don't miss anything and I don't get stressed out because even if it's a long list, that stresses me out less than like thinking that I'm gonna miss stuff out. So normally I try and figure out what books I'm gonna be reading for book clubs and for buddy reads. Obviously there is primarily my book club that I host, which is the Reading Around the World book club, which is my pride and joy and I absolutely adore doing that book club. And we are doing this month, for January, we are doing Samoa, which was a little bit tough to find some books because basically we usually do, the author is from that country and also the book is based in that country. So we did eventually find a book and we are doing though they who do not grieve or those who do not grieve it's they who do not grieve yeah so the book that's the book that we are doing it's by Sia Feigl I think that's how you say her name but this looks really good it looks really poetic and quite strange and I cannot wait to read it I know that it's based around a few different women it's also really based around this tattoo and I think it's got lots of kind of Samoan beliefs and kind of folklore or uh, culture involved in the story so I'm so excited to read it. Cannot wait to learn more about Samoa from reading this book and also doing it with the book club. And if you do want to join the book club, then come and join. I host it usually on Fable and I do TikTok lives as well. Uh, we are like 300 people strong now, which is so much fun to do. And I usually do a live show over on TikTok where we pick the country and the book together um, through a randomized wheel. So come and join over on TikTok for one of the live shows to see what we're gonna be doing for February. I'll be doing that live show in a couple of weeks. So the next book I'm doing is a buddy read and I'm doing it with Alice friend of the channel who gets a mention in almost every single video. One day I have to get her in for a sit down video. She does show up in vlogs quite a lot because she is my bookish friend and she's the best person to talk about books with, which is why we always do buddy reads and why she gets a mention in almost every single video that I do. So we are carrying on with our tradition of doing Agatha Christie Miss Marples and we are currently reading Nemesis. I am about halfway through or actually probably more than halfway through. We will finish this quite soon, but it's very fun. We kind of try and figure out the mystery and we do clues, we do notes, it's a great fun time. Next up, I've committed to reading one of my book talk friends' um, favourite books because she really wants me to read it because she is also going to read some of my favourite books um, and her favourite book is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, I think. Um, I don't know anything about this other than it's contemporary young adult, I think, which is not usually my usual genre that I pick up so I don't know how this is gonna go but I've committed to reading it we're gonna see how it goes I don't know anything about the plot other than that the ending is in the title so I assume that they both die at the end and maybe it's a love story with the tragic ending um I really don't know how this is gonna go but I'm gonna read it and see and then next up I like to also see what I put on my TBR for last month that I did not finish I finished most stuff or at least I started it all but I have to finish Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. So this is the third one in her first series, the Farsia trilogy. So I made it almost halfway through. I was listening to this actually a lot on audiobook and then I ran out of audiobook hours basically is what happened. Um, so I'm going to be finishing this off this month. I'm really enjoying it. It's very slow and very comforting and it's a very classic fantasy story. It's a classic quest story with our main character, Fitz. So I'm not gonna tell you the plot of this one because it's the third one in the series, but I would very much recommend Robin Hobb in general, and I'm gonna be carrying on with her other series after I finish this one. And the other book that I did not manage to finish last month that I wanted to is The Wheel of Time, number 10. I got 2% into this in December. 
which actually is quite a few pages. If you know anything about the Wheel of Time, they are so, so long. The books are just incredibly long. And there's also 14 books in the series. I'm up to book number 10 and I've committed to, in 2024, finishing off this series because I need it out of my life at this point. I'm not enjoying where I currently am in this series. It's gone through, you know, peaks and troughs. I'm currently in a trough, a deep, deep trough but I am going to push through this book because I've heard that after book number 10, book 11 gets much better and then it just goes up from there and then everything is fine and it's great and it's over. So the book that I'm currently up to is book number 10, which is Crossroads of Twilight. Again, I'm book number 10 in the series. I'm not gonna tell you the plot, but basically another very classic fantasy series. This is one of the original big fantasy series that was ever made and it's why I want to read it because I love fantasy as a genre and I always want to read the classics in each genre. So that is the book that I'm going to be reading for Wheel of Time for January. Next up I have a few kind of new releases or things that are about to come out that I want to keep on top of. Um, namely the first one which I started last month and actually no I didn't. I started this just a couple of days ago. I don't know why I said that. So this is coming out in January and it is the Atlas Complex. So this is the third one in the the Atlas 6 series. I think that's what it, I think that's what the series is called. I loved the Atlas 6. I gave it five stars. I liked the next one which is the Atlas Paradox and I'm now about a halfway through this book which is the third and final in the series and I'll save my views for when it comes out. This comes out in about a week's time. And I think actually technically I'm not allowed to say anything until it comes out because it's one of the like limited edition proofs and they sent me like quite a scary letter being like, do not show anyone what's inside the book and do not talk about it. So I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm kind of scared of that scary letter. But I will tell you more of my thoughts when it comes out on the 9th. Um, I'm also currently filming a reading vlog where I am reading this book so that will be up soon or probably <laughs> around the 9th of January because I won't be able to say anything until then so if you're interested in that then look out for it but yes I will be finishing this in January but as soon as I have finished that I know the book that I'm going to read after which is also just about to come out or maybe it's out now um, and it is Everly Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. And if you saw my best books of the year, you know that I absolutely loved the first one in this series, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I just think this is gonna be so cute. It's gonna be, I think after some of the longer, heavier fantasy ones that I've been putting on my TBR, this is gonna be a breath of fresh air and I just cannot wait to read it. I honestly really wanna start reading it now, but I've told myself I have to finish the other ones that I'm supposed to be finishing before I can start this one. Otherwise I'll just not finish them at all and just read this. These are, I would say, cozy fantasy stories. The first one, you're following Emily. She's trying to finish her encyclopedia. She goes to this very remote, icy village in the middle of nowhere and she ends up kind of making a fool of herself and no one really likes her and wants to help her. And then her academic rival and also sometimes friend shows up and kind of gets in her way and it's just a great fun time. I love these books, so I cannot wait for the second one. But if you know me at all, you know I do not read blurbs. So I actually have not read the blurb of this one because I hate reading anything to do with blurbs. And I already know I'm gonna like it, so I don't need to read the blurb. Another one that is also coming out in January and I've had this on my shelf for a few months actually, um, so I'm getting to it now and it is Loot, which I really love this copy of. It's got this gorgeous gold at the front and I think this is a historical fiction, um, which normally isn't my like favorite genre, but I really am intrigued by the blurb. It also seems more of an adventure story than just a straight up historical fiction, but I'm really, really excited about this. You're following a toy maker and I think there's kind of an unexpected hero's quest. Um, I've seen some early reviews for this and it looks really good. So can't wait to read it and I will let you know when I have read it. Okay, and then another couple that I want to read that are coming out either in January or early February. Number one is Kylie Reed's new book. I was really, really happy to be sent this. So this is Come and Get It. I don't think this is the final cover. I don't think it is. This is definitely an arc but I'm not sure that's the final cover. This comes out in January. I'm not actually sure what date it doesn't say, but this is Kylie Reed who wrote Such a Fun Age, which I absolutely loved when I read it. And I think this is a campus story as well with kind of misbehaving teachers and a relationship with a professor and like, I don't know, but it sounds really intriguing. I'm very excited for it and it comes out soon. So I wanna get to it this month. Another book that is not currently out yet, but I was sent this by the author who is my friend over on TikTok, who is Caitlin. So I'm going to read this book this month, which is The Real Deal, which 
which is her debut book, which I'm so excited for. It's just been so lovely watching the behind the scenes of her getting this published. And then I'm so grateful that she sent it to me as well. So I'm gonna be reading this this month. She describes it as it's come from her obsession with Dance Moms, the like reality show, but it's about these 12 year olds who go on this show and they're all supposed to be potential superstars, singers or dancers or uh, actors. And then I think it's looking back to one of the girls when she is 26 and then she's looking back on her time um, when she was 12 year old kind of going on this show. So I'm very excited for this one, cannot wait. And then because it's January, I was trying to do a bit of spring cleaning out of my TBR. And so I've got this book that I was very kindly sent, but if you saw my worst books of the year month, I'm being a bit more careful now with stuff that I've been sent because before I was just saying yes to everything and like kind of requesting everything. I'm being a little bit more careful now, but this was still in my era of asking for loads of books and like being sent just anything. Um, so I'm not sure I would have requested it now that I am being a bit more like discerning with what I'm requesting, but basically it is cutting teeth. So I was very kindly sent this one, but I'm thinking that it's not gonna be my thing, um, which is why I haven't picked it up yet. I've had it on my shelf for months and months and months now. And I think that this might be a DNF, but I wanna try it before I kind of give it up. But it's described as a big little lies situation with, but the children are actually like vampires or something. Um, once again, I don't like reading blurbs, so I'm terrible at describing books. Although Ashley Audrain, who wrote The Push, I really loved The Push and she has actually blurbed this. So maybe it might be something that I really end up enjoying. Um, it could just be like a fun, you know, thrillery vibe. I'm not sure if it even is a thriller. But yeah, this is definitely gonna be like one that I have no idea how I'm gonna feel about and I'm gonna be easy on myself if I do want to DNF this this month. So those are all the arcs and like new releases that I want to get to. Um, another one that I just randomly picked up from my shelf that I really want to read. Actually, you know why I didn't, it's not random. I just saw Reagan from Peru's Projects TBR and she's reading this book this month and I thought, I have that on my shelf, I could read it too. Um, so that's why I'm reading The Last Unicorn, which I was obsessed with this movie as a child. I was so, so obsessed with it. I absolutely loved it and I've never read the book. And I think it was also out of print for many years and now it's just been kind of republished with a new introduction from Patrick Rothfuss, who is one of my favorite authors, despite his controversy. So I'm gonna read this this month. And this is a, another classical fantasy story about a unicorn who's the last unicorn in the world. And she kind of goes on this this quest adventure trying to find people who are like her so that is also going on the stack okay next up we have two books that are for my reading around the world challenge and I usually post these videos individually over on my TikTok so I don't like to show which books I'm going to be reading for the upcoming month on TikTok but I do show you the full list on YouTube. I don't really like showing on TikTok the books that I'm going to be reading for the challenge, but I feel like if you're watching me here on YouTube, then like you deserve to know, you know? You you get like a little sneak peek, like a little like behind the scenes of the books that are coming up for my reading around the world challenge. So that being said, I am reading two different books. One is Elena Knows, which I've had on my radar for so long. I've actually already read, I think this is Argentina. I've actually already read a book from Argentina, so I don't technically need to read this for the Reading Around the World Challenge, but I've heard so much about this. It's been on loads of people's favorites lists and I just really, really want to read it. Once again, I'm sorry, I'm not actually gonna read the blurb because it's quite a short book and I don't want it to be spoiled. It's also two paragraphs long, so that'll definitely be too spoilery for me. But I think from what I know that this book focuses mainly on a mother-daughter relationship and I've just heard that it is absolutely incredible. So cannot wait to read it. And then the other book that I'm also doing for the Reading Around the World Challenge is The Bridge Over the Drina. And I've had this on my shelf for a long time. I've also heard that it's absolutely incredible. It's kind of classic. I think it might be a classic or considered from some people to be a classic. Um, and I think the author did win a Nobel Prize or for literature, whether it's for this book or just for their books in general. Cause I don't think you individually win a Nobel Prize for one book. I think it's like all of your books together, but they won a Nobel Prize. So I really wanna know. <laughs> what this book is like. This is set in Bosnia and obviously focuses around the area around this bridge over the Drina. So it's historical fiction, but also like very much fictionalized historical fiction. But I have heard incredible things about this one as well and I'm excited to get to it. So the last couple of books that I wanna talk about that I'm gonna be reading are from my library loans that have come in and also from NetGalley. That is basically where you can get 
uh, free books that are not out yet, which is just honestly the best thing in the world. Um, so on my net galley, I currently have two books that I need to read in January. One is The City of Stardust, which I've already made a good go through. I am almost finished this book. And then the other one is The Foxglove King. Um, I'm not sure actually now that I've I've seen a few reviews about the Foxglove King I'm less excited about reading this one but if you've read it or heard anything about it then let me know if you liked it or not um, I'm still going to give it a go and then on my library I am without a doubt going to be reading the Scholomance Scholomance series which is by Naomi Novik which starts off with A Deadly Education um, and I'm going to be reading book two and most likely also book three this month which are The Last graduate and the golden enclaves and they've both come in on my library and I'm going to be reading both of them and I'm going to be reading them by audiobook which is how I know I'm going to be reading them very very quickly because I'm obsessed with this books and I'm obsessed with this series and I'm so so excited to see how it ends basically this is a take on the magical school kind of trope but it's done in such a unique way and it's a really dark take on that I talked about the first book in this series in my best books of the year video which if you haven't seen please go and watch these books follow our main character Elle who is basically she was prophesized when she was very young that she has the potential to basically end the world World with dark magic and she doesn't really want to do that but basically her whole life she stayed away from people because of this prophecy she finds it very difficult to not do incredibly powerful dark magic but she doesn't want to she just wants to live and survive in this very dark and very dangerous magical school but I just love her as main character and I love this series it's so inventive it's just so addictive I cannot wait to see how this series is going to end but I'm also going to be really sad when it's over because I've been so enjoying reading this and I can't believe that I put off reading the first one for so long because it's been on my you know radar for years and I just hadn't picked it up and then randomly started reading it and have been absolutely obsessed ever since so it's been so much fun I would say these books are definitely not perfect like technically they're not perfect they're very exposition heavy a lot of the time Elle the main character is literally just telling you things about the world and how the world works and the magic and the school and different mechanics for the world but so much of it is just so inventive and so fun and I also really like the twist that she puts on like things in her own internal monologue that I really don't care but I could really understand how some people just wouldn't like how these books are written because a lot of them kind of do seem like almost like a lecture being told to you but I don't know it just really works for me and I really like it. So those are the 16 books that I'm going to be reading in the month of January. I can only hold about five of them in one hand. So please let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought, if you liked them, if you didn't like them. And also please remember to subscribe to my channel because I'm getting so close to 1000 subscribers and it's just making me so happy. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who has already subscribed because it just is the best thing in the world. And I also just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to me this year. It has absolutely made my year. Making these videos has been the most fun in the world. And I'm just so, so happy to be part of this booktube community. And I don't want to get all soppy or anything, but it's just been so much fun. And I can't wait for 2024 to make this channel bigger and better and make the videos better, get my editing skills up more and just to do more fun and creative content as the year goes by so please subscribe to see how that goes and thank you so much for all your comments and encouragements and all of your likes on the video because it seems like a small thing but it's a huge thing to me so thank you so much and that is all for my emotional little thank you at the end of the video so I will sign off now and say thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon bye